Hello everyone and welcome back to 4FS Gaming. Last week I uploaded a video looking at 5 essential tactics in Hunt Showdown and there was plenty of interest in a series of follow up videos looking closely at each of these tactics. So in this video we are going to look at pushing. This manoeuvre is about taking aggressive action against an opponent who is likely waiting for you and doing it as safely as you can. We're going to investigate the principles of an effective push, both when fighting in the open or in compounds, and then we'll take a deep dive into how to push boss compounds when people are holed up inside. There will be a bunch of stepped out gameplay examples, which is why this video is so long, but I'll throw down some timestamps to help you navigate. So let's talk about some of the basic principles of a good push. When you want to be aggressive, perhaps the most important thing is to commit, and then commit some more, and then just in case, commit just a little bit more to get you over the top. A push is inherently risky. You're rushing down the opponent, and you're often putting yourself in a position where you either have to kill an enemy to close out the engagement, or you're just going to die. This is a finishing move, it means you have to give it 100%. If you do not go aggressive, if you try and heal instead of pushing through at close range, then you're likely going to die unless you've got very good team backup. When it's time to go, you need to go hard and fast. That aggression tends to pile on the pressure, and under pressure I can tell you that about 70% of Hunt players lose the ability to aim and make decisions at their best. This is how I can often use a knife to clear a boss lair against people with all kinds of weapons. Commitment and aggression. This brings me to the second principle, consider your loadout. Now your loadout is much less important than your intent, so the main point here is that it doesn't matter what you have, if the opportunity presents itself, your loadout should not prevent you from pushing. If your team is closing down on a severely weakened enemy, having a spark sniper and an uppercut is no reason to stay away, get in there and help them. However, you do have to be aware of your limitations. If I'm using a single shot rifle and a slow fire and pistol, I know that I can make one quick kill in CQC with the quick swap, but then I'm basically down to my knife for anything else unless I'm going to be pulling headshots from hipfire. On the other hand, if I have an officer, I know I'm good for about two kills before I have to run out of ammo, pause, reset, think about something else, or use a knife. If I know the enemy has a shotgun inside a building, I'm going to plan my entrance so that I maintain some degree of distance. After all, it will be suicide to rush into a doorway that they're sitting next to. My third principle is about having an escape plan. Now a push is about committing, and you're likely not going to have an escape option until after you've cleared at least one enemy, but you do have to be prepared for when you succeed. Once you get the drop on an enemy, you finish them off, will you be exposed to the rest of their team? Will you be able to return to cover, or do you have to push on and continue attacking? In a push, you almost always will be exposing yourself to some degree, so you have to have a plan about where to go once you finish your first step. Principle number four is about maintaining momentum and pressure when possible. When you initiate a push and get a kill, you want to keep going and seeking enemies as quickly as possible. Don't give time for survivors to regroup or heal up. If you get a kill at mid-range, take ground as to prevent any revives, and roll onward to further enemies once you clear out one from inside of a building, for instance. There will be times where after getting a kill, you need to stop to heal and reload, but doing so takes valuable time and you need to weigh this up carefully. It alleviates that pressure on your enemies and it allows them to make counterplays. You also want to push as a team when possible. Now I promised diagrams in my last video, so here we go. These are quick, but hopefully in the future they'll get a little bit more involved. Pushing as a team does not mean sticking together necessarily, but it does mean timing your point of engagement. There are two main approaches to pushing as a team. The first would be a concentrated push, where you approach together, you stay close, and this is advantageous because you will maintain overlapping fields of fire, you will be able to cover each other if someone gets hit, and it applies the full force of your attack to a singular point. This is really great if you can isolate an enemy and then force a 2 or even 3v1 engagement. Now the danger here is that as you are tightly grouped, you're going to be vulnerable to being encircled, blown up, or simply gunned down by a crown and king, aftermath, or any other weapon with blistering crowd control capability. Here is the alternative split vector approach in which you will take different angles to your team. Now this is preferred for confident players that work really well together, because then you can apply pressure and make noise from multiple directions which often confuses and overwhelms less experienced enemies, 
It also allows one or two people to take the attention of the defenders while their partner sneaks in behind. In more open environments, this means that you will have fields of fire that deny enemies cover and concealment as well. The downside here is that a savvy team can isolate the most distant team member and then strike down on them hard, so you do have to be able to handle yourself in the event of a counter push. Whatever the approach, the worst thing that can happen is that you either attack at different times, or one person does not even attack at all because they don't think they can use a sniper scope in close quarters combat. Spoiler alert, you can. Go into training with a spark sniper, practice acquiring a target in hip fire, and then scoping in a split second before you shoot. It'll take about 20 minutes, and now you can use a scope at any range and you don't have to go back to the menu when you get a fog map. Thank me later. Now obviously any of this team stuff doesn't apply when you're a solo, but all of these other principles do, so keep that in mind. The last principle is about picking the moment. Finding the right point of initiation is just so critical when you're going to do a push. You are looking for opportunities that tell you, now is the time to go, and go hard. This is a difficult thing to teach. There's a lot of intuition. Usually it's after an enemy gets hit or killed, or when you know that the enemy is distracted. Sometimes it's based on their positioning compared to yours, and this point of initiation stuff is all better seen through gameplay, so let's have a quick look. This first one is a micro push. We are defending a lair and the enemy team is probing around the outside. As a side note, one of the biggest mistakes I see teams make when defending a boss lair is camping inside it. If the enemy gets close and is vulnerable, you need to push out like a trapdoor spider, which is exactly what happens here. Right at this point is my moment of initiation. I know the enemy is alone, I know he has a Mosin and I have a shotgun, and I know for a fact he has no idea about what I'm about to do. This push is all commitment as it involves completely leaping out of a boss lair window to guarantee the kill. Now here I also satisfy the third principle as I have plenty of cover to escape under the compound and I can loot a second of dark sight to continue planning my push. Let's go over to another example where I start as a defender, however instead of just sitting inside, we are doing the smart thing and looking for an opportunity to turn the tables. This hit marker is my point of initiation. Once I see that, I know the approximate location of my enemy, and I know they're not going to be moving particularly rapidly as they put out their fire. Now I don't have line of sight, but it's still the perfect opportunity for a frag grenade follow-up. From here, it's just about maintaining momentum. The body is behind cover, so falling back into the lair would potentially lead us to lose any progress that we've made so far, so we take a little bit of ground, pushing the enemy back. The second effort of this push really starts in earnest as soon as they start exchanging gunshots. At this point, any delay risks my partner getting headshot, so I put the pedal to the metal and I chase down the target by the noise he's making. Notice my partner is folding in from another angle. Even if the enemy had not peaked again and survived a bit longer, his cover would have been denied by my partner in another second anyway. So that's a good little example of a split push. Okay, let's look at one last clip, and this one is by far the riskiest of the bunch. So my loadout is not exactly optimized for close quarter combat. I have an officer, but against multiple targets this can be limiting due to the reload and magazine size. My initial push is poorly timed. My teammates are of no help, and I initiated based on the melee attack noise I was hearing against AI but they were very quickly dealt with, so I walked into a fully prepared team. Luckily, I have an acceptable escape plan in mind, but the only thing that really saves me is that these guys weren't confident enough to really charge in after they'd made a hit. They did not take advantage of a really good initiation when they dropped me to low health. Sometimes, not taking an opportunity is the biggest mistake of all. Right there is probably my biggest mistake in this fight. I have the opportunity to reload the officer and I don't, and we'll see how critical this is later. Now this isn't a great point of initiation, as only one enemy out of three has been hit and not killed, and my team are out of position, but by having another enemy busy with a meathead encourages me to just go for it. So here comes the commitment, 100%. If you don't go all in, you do not have a chance in moments like this. So yeah, 
that was a bit lucky. The knife rush is very effective because they don't expect that level of aggression and they panic. I also don't have an escape route and I finished the encounter with my last bullet because I neglected to reload earlier. My team attacking and dying at the same time is really what made that possible. Had they not been taking a number of shots from the enemy, I would never have made it. Okay, so for the second part of this video, we're going to be discussing boss lairs, specifically how to rush them. Now you can't really discuss pushing a boss lair without discussing how to siege a boss lair, so here we go. In a situation where there is an inside team that does not want to come out, and an external team applying pressure, each group has its own advantages. The external team has much greater advantage when peeking, as they can hide in any number of bushes and peek from any number of spots all the way around the boss lair, while the internal team have a much more limited number of places to peek from. Just be careful because there are some sneaky cracks that can be peeked through, especially with scopes, so just because that window is closed or they're not peeking that doorway, doesn't mean they're not trying to acquire you. The external team, however, has to worry about getting third partied as they are more exposed, and the internal team is generally closer together, so is less likely to get picked off. They also have access to Darksight, which is a massive bonus. The good news is that most teams that hide inside with shotguns won't actually use that Darksight boost effectively to isolate and target attackers, they'll stay hidden inside. So here are the phases that I like to go through when sieging a boss lair. Don't forget that in actual gameplay, it all gets a lot more messy than this, so we can't break it down that distinctly. But this is the theory anyway. Phase 1 is to secure your area. The biggest worry you have is getting third partied while you probe a lair. If you are reasonably sure that there are not other teams left on the map, then this is of course not a concern. But otherwise, you do have a few different options. You can rotate around the boss lair to an area where you do not expect incoming players to come from, like a map edge or the direction you spawned initially. Now all of this is based on sound information that you've heard throughout the match, and the way that the clues have folded, you've got to be predicting where other teams might have gone, where they're likely to come from. Uh, but if you do this well, you can make it so that you're not pincered between the boss lair and an incoming team when they do arrive. The second option is to rush the boss lair immediately without any of the siege style tactics I'm about to go through. This means that you might have a disadvantage against the boss lair team going in, you won't necessarily have a great point of initiation, and you won't necessarily have much information about what you're walking into, but you're certainly not going to get third party. Sometimes, when they're right behind you, this is one of the only options. Now, the third option is of course to hide in the area and ambush the third team before beginning any siege, and if you know they're on the way and where they're coming from, this is a good one. If you don't know that and you just suspect that there might be more teams out there, well, you can do a lot of waiting for nothing, and I'm not that patient anymore. The other issue with this is that you can get drawn into an extended fight with the external team, and then the team with bounty inside the boss lake gets away, and it's just very frustrating. But it is a good option if you know they're about to roll up from a certain direction and you can get some nice picks. So the next phase is to probe defenses. This is about testing, preparation, and intelligence gathering. You need to feel out what kind of players you've got here. Are they aggressive? Are they skilled? Are they just going to sit inside and camp out the lair? Listen for footsteps. Make sure you can figure out how many people are probably in there. Which areas are they holding up in? If you can, bait them into peeking. Try for a few wall bangs. See if you can get a pick. Get them to shoot back and identify their weapons. Check for traps at entryways by shooting the floor behind doors. Remember, you don't have to actually see traps to set them off. You can just wallbang them as well. And you can do this all reasonably safely as long as you're coordinating with your team and you're covering windows and that kind of thing. You can remove window covers and doors with explosive ammo if you have any. And if possible, try to whittle down their resources by hitting them through walls to soak up meds, rotating around, probing for shots and new angles. This will also make them use up their dark side as they try and keep track of where you are. See if you can get close and bait them into throwing some things out at you where you can just pull back out of range and get off scot-free. That also wastes their resources. What you do want to do is be careful of crack peaks and runouts. Now if the enemy is smart, they'll be using dark side boost to isolate someone and push them together. This is obviously a constant risk as a solo player, so always have a sneaky escape in mind, or place some traps on entrances yourself, so that you know if someone runs out there, well, then they're going to run into a trap. 
a caveat on that point, it usually involves getting very close to an entryway and you might get shotgunned. There are some enemies that like to wire up a boss lair with lots of concertina. Explosives make short work of it. If you can get close, any slashing melee tool will do the same. Just really watch out for those shotgun wall bangs. Now let's go to phase three, which kind of happens simultaneously to phase two. This is when you're looking to either identify or create your moment of initiation. Now a good moment of initiation makes this so much easier. Maybe it's a wall bang. Maybe they peek a window and you land a headshot. Maybe you hear them cut themselves on their own barbed wire and that's your in. If nothing good presents, then throwing in explosives is my go-to way of initiating or creating an initiation. At best you get a kill, and even hearing footsteps running around can tell you where they are inside the building, and it lets you look the right direction when you go in. So you're facing the enemies you're going to shoot at, and then it comes down to reaction time rather than you just getting ambushed. If you are really desperate, even the increased banishing sound at the end of the banish can be a good initiation if you can time that well. It's hard to tell where attackers are coming from when the defenders, all they can hear is that crackling banished lightning. Either way, once you've made that initiation, we're on to the final push, which is the last phase. And here, we're just applying all of the same principles as any other push you would do. Yeah, you're pushing into a building and it might be defended, but everything else sticks. Now sometimes a lair is so trapped up and well defended that it seems almost impossible to push in. In a very rare number of cases, I will conclude that the enemy's defences are too great for my resources and my loadout, so I will retreat to 150 metres away out of dark side range, I'll make some noise or I'll get a teammate to make some noise, and I'm trying to make it sound like we've given up and we're going away, and then that often baits people out of the boss lair. At that point, we have to race into extraction, but it's better than running into one of those underground lairs full of barbed wire when you don't have any explosives. Okay, so this video is getting pretty long, but I do have a little example of a basic boss lair push. We're approaching a compound. We are confident that it's just us and the defending team. They are eager to peek us, so I use that to our advantage. I'm looking for that moment of initiation already. And there it is. You can see how much I accelerate after that kill. It's immediate, straight into the lair. Now, here is a critical error. I'm not actually pushing with my teammate, and in this instance, they're the ones that are too slow, because after the initiation, you want to be in there fast, 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 and they were mucking around with AI outside. In moments like this, outrun the AI, climb the ladder, it can't follow you up. Luckily, my teammate does arrive just in time to save the day. And I'm sorry that I don't have more footage of pushing heavily defended lairs that are all trapped up. I just haven't come across people doing that in a long time. I don't think it's a particularly strong strategy. It can be tricky and it takes time to deconstruct, but as long as you're rotating around, probing, looking for opportunities, throwing a few grenades, usually an opportunity presents itself and then you're able to make your way in. And that brings us to the end of the video. Please let me know what you thought of it in the comments below, and thank you especially to our Patreon supporters, because without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this every week, and also everyone else for watching all of the way through. This is Ascendance from 4FS Gaming. Let me know what you'd like to see next week down in the comments.